Dexona, Clexin ki dose kam, Monosef, Doxycycline, Remdesivir, input output monitoring. I think that has to be very very strong, Devinder. Because and repeat creatinine tomorrow morning. There are 5 million people in India that require intensive care and there are only 70,000 ICU beds available. Add to that a limited number of intensivist qualified doctors and nurses, you've got a serious challenge on your hands. A study by the Leapfrog Group showed that if people in intensive care are managed by intensivist qualified doctors and nurses, the chances of survival actually go up by 30%. And that's why I'm here, to look at how patients are getting access to the current levels of experience and knowledge of those specialised in ICU care. Dr. Celeste Joa, who I'm about to talk to, is the chief intensivist here at the Apex Hospital in northwestern Jaipur. Hi. Hi. Okay, thank you. Dr. Celeste, how are you? I'm good. It's great to meet you. Let's do a bit of a COVID handshake. <laughs> you know, you've got 1.3 billion people in this country. There's over 5 million that do need intensive care. You've got 70,000 beds in the entire country and you've got a limited number of qualified staff. So how do you overcome those, those huge challenges? What we have been trying to do is protocolized care, optimized resources, enhanced care coordination. The most important thing is every patient will have a trajectory of care. At the right moments, we have to make the right decisions. So 24 hour decision making process with the protocolization, monitoring, algorithm-based care, we can actually devote and apply all these together as a team to that patient at that time. I think we need to start some form of uh, TUSQ DX. We're in the command center here. Yeah. We're in the hub. Yeah. So what is the setup? How many hospitals do you have? Where are they? And how are you getting the education, knowledge, and care to them? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, three sites connected at the moment. Uh, one site is where uh, COVID patients are being isolated and treated and uh, monitored. The other site is around 180 kilometers away, three, four hours away. And that is another site, uh, which is around 20, 25 kilometers away. So we have multiple sites being managed at the same time. Without this, I'm probably be able to see 10 to 15 patients in a day. With the capabilities, now we are managing around 80 to 100 patients. So it enhances the quality of the care that we are giving at least by 4x to 5x. How long has this capability been operational for? So this has been operational for six months. And have you noticed uh, an increase in the survival rate in that time? Yeah, we've noticed two things. A lot of sick patients are being treated at the spoke and improved enhanced survival. That is a dramatic improvement that is happening. A third thing is that by applying the ICU protocols over months, same process, a lot of nursing staff gets empowered and lots of patients are getting benefit when they're empowered to make decisions, right time escalation, right time de-escalation. We're able to even free up some beds because somebody who was not able to go home spending 10 days in the ICU might not have needed 10 days of intensive care. He could have only got better in three, four days of intensive care by applying all the right protocols. To see what the reality is of this capability on the ground, is there one of the spokes that I could um, yeah. ride out to? I think we can go to Mansarovar, which is not very far from here, about 30 minutes away. Come out to the spoke, Mansarovar Hospital, and Nurse Devinda is gonna tell me how it works on the ground in reality. Nesta Vinda, how are you? Hi, thanks. It's great to meet you. And Deepak is uh, an admin coordinator here at the hospital and he's gonna provide a translating function for me. This is amazing what I'm seeing here, that this is allowing you to improve access to intensive care at a significant level, but how has it impacted your ability to give intensive care to patients like this gentleman here. Uh, yes, technology is here. Uh, Sometimes we receive a critical patient. So 
it might be in the morning it might be in the midnight so there are the instance where uh, the doctor is not available or it's so far that he will take time to come so they are the golden hours of the patient's uh, safety or a uh, survival they can uh, seek the support from the experts seek the support from the intensivists from the command center more importantly the intensivist can see the patient can see the response of the patient and according to that they can update the treatment how has this technology affected you personally hamare paas kai pe what they feel personally is they are fully satisfied that now they can save a patient a critical patient where earlier they might have lost him nurse devinda deepak uh, thank you so much for um, letting me come in here and speak about this fascinating subject and all because basically of this technology which is literally yeah life changing yeah